I've seen lots of little wows this week. Little wows are the things that make me stop and marvel. Today's little wow was finding part of an eggshell, evidence that a baby bird had been born. Then I stood under a bottle brush, watching the New Holland honey eaters and wattle birds flitter from branch to branch. The sun danced around the shrub, illuminating its flowers, their anthers lighting up like wicks of a candle. Another little well. What are your little wells, Wonder Weavers? I'd love you to share with us. So we're almost there, Wonder Weavers. This week I've been spending uh, my time making tiny items to decorate the parlour. There's just one item that I really want to make and that particular item requires more thought and a little bit more time. So, like I said, I'm almost there and I can't wait to reveal the parlour. Recently I did an interview with Shout Out LA and the article was published this week. If you would like to learn more about my story and in particular my a little bit about my creative and business journey, uh, I've placed a link to the article in the description box below. And I want to say a big thank you to those of you who replied to my question last week, which was, who is going to live in the dollhouse? You came up with some wonderful ideas and you also made me smile with joy, so thank you so much. At the moment it looks like mice might be living in the house in the future, perhaps along with a human family, or it could even be the fairies. I loved all of those ideas, so thank you so much. So let's get creative and make some items for the dollhouse. This week I experimented with different ways to make candle holders. In the end I decided to use earring findings and beads to create a pair of candlesticks inspired by Victorian crystal ones. For each candlestick holder I used two earring backs, a jump ring and three beads, a crystal bead, a tube bead and a dragonfly bead. I start by gluing the crystal bead to one of the earring backs. I try using a hot glue gun and also PVA. I find my hot glue gun is messy. For this task, I prefer to use PVA even though it takes longer to dry. Next, I glue the tube bead to the other earring back. Once dry, I glue them to the crystal bead. Then I glue a jump ring to the earring back. As a finishing touch, I glue a dragonfly bead to each holder. While doing my research this week, I discovered some videos where YouTubers made real mini candles. While I love candles, I'm not overly keen on the idea of having them in the dollhouse. And this is because they're a potential fire hazard. And as I say this to you, Wonder Weavers, I'm thinking of my first ever excavation, which was at a gold commissioner's camp at Kyandra, a gold mining town in regional New South Wales. The commissioner's residence was destroyed in a house fire. The fireplace was probably the origin of the fire. So with all this in mind, I decide to make candles from clay. I roll a small amount of clay into a long, thin snake 
and then cut it in half and then shape the tapered end to make it look like a wick. Then I bake the clay candles. Once cooled, I glue them to the holders. I've been reading Ella Montgomery's Emily series of late. In Emily's quest, Emily inherits a gazing ball. The gazing ball was popular in the Victorian period. It could be used for decoration in the garden and was also thought to ward off evil and bestow good luck. So I've decided to make one for the parlour. I make a stand in a similar way to the candlestick holders. And then for the ball, I use a cat's eye bead. To help hold the ball in place, I use double-sided tape. The next item I make is a vase with flowers. I roll a small ball of clay into an egg shape and place it on a small circular disc. The clay disc will become the foot or base of the vase. For the top or the lip of the vase, I then mould a second circular disc. As you can see, these three simple parts are the start of an hourglass shaped vase. Next, I make a cavity into the shoulder and body of the vase using the back or the end of my paintbrush. As I rotate the brush, I widen the mouth of the vessel. I keep working until I'm happy with the overall shape. I also make sure that the three main parts of the vessel are conjoined. Once I'm ready, I bake it in the oven. Later, I decide to cover the vessel with silver leaf. I glue silver leaf to the exterior of the vessel using PVA glue. And if after brushing the excess leaf away, there are areas that are exposed, I simply cover them with small amounts of leaf. By the end, my fingers are shimmering like the moon. To make the flowers, I will use crepe paper. I have two different kinds. The green is the standard one often used for birthday decorations. The purple is Italian crepe paper. Italian crepe paper is great for making flowers because it can be stretched and bent. I start by gluing a strip of green paper around half a centimetre in width to floral wire. The wire is around four centimetres long. This will become the stem of the flower. I'm going to try and make a peony flower. The flower is made up of densely clustered, irregular shaped petals. For the inner petals, I cut another half a centimeter strip, this time of the purple Italian crepe paper. I then cut both ends of the strip, allowing my scissors to move in a wave-like motion. 
for the outer petals, I cut rectangular pieces of crepe paper and then shaped them. Along one end I cut like a wave again and then I cut into the sides forming a V shape. Once I have a small handful, I stretch and bend each petal. Now I take the stem, dab a little bit of glue along the inner petal strip and begin to wrap it around one end of the wire using my thumb and my middle finger as anchors. I then glue the outer petals, working readily. For the sepal of the flower, I cut three hearts from green crepe paper and glue them to the base of the flower's head. To finish the flowers off, I cut long ovals for the leaves and then glue them to the stem. Once completely dry, I cut the stems to size and place them in the vase. When looking at photos of Victorian parlours, I noticed that where there was a piano, it was often decorated with a cloth. So I've decided to make one for my mini piano using ribbon and lace I thrifted. I first pin the lace into place and then trim it to size. And in an old fashioned way, I take a needle and thread and sew the lace to the ribbon with a simple running stitch. I'm not much of a sewer, but I do like sewing by hand. I think it's a beautiful mindfulness practice. It helps me to slow down and be present. So with just one item left to make, I start to arrange the parlour. I hope you enjoyed this week's blog, Wonder Weavers. Take care, stay well. And don't forget to play. Adios. I wonder, Robin, what do you see when you gaze into the ball?
perhaps the eye of a cat. <laughs>